Two days later, it's dawn as the ship approaches the English Channel. They're now exactly halfway through their journey. Even out at sea, there's plenty of work to keep Captain Jensen and his crew busy. As captain, Lars is responsible not just for his ship, but also his cargo, worth a staggering three billion dollars. So, no pressure there. I have the responsibility for the cargo, and I have to deliver it back in the same condition as I received it. That's the main purpose for the, this trade, actually. The Maersk's cargo of 11,000 containers is just a handful of the 20 million being transported around the world at any one time. These containers need to be regularly inspected to ensure all refrigerated reefers are working properly. That job is the responsibility of Chief Officer Bogey Kaisberg. If a reefer broke down, the cargo inside will be probably be ruined. So we need to take action immediately and, and, uh, and repair. And if the repair is not possible, uh, well, I haven't tried that yet, luckily. It will be terrible. Together with electrician Jan Zar, they keep a close eye on the hundreds of reefers on board to ensure everything is running smoothly. Each unit must run at precisely the right temperature depending upon its cargo. Meanwhile, eight floors below deck, third engineer Balaji Krishnan is inspecting the enormous diesel engine. It's hot, noisy work, and definitely not a task for the outdoors type. It's very seldom we get to see the sun, but of course on the weekends we can go out on deck and uh, have some fresh air and uh, have a look at the sun. The massive engine drives a 500 foot long propeller shaft, the longest ever built. It's Balaji's job to ensure every part of this massive propulsion system keeps working properly, especially important since there are no repair shops in the middle of the ocean should they break down. Fortunately, once the cruise shifts are over, there's time to relax, and Balaji has emerged from the engine room to challenge Bogey to a game of table tennis. Later, they can unwind in the onboard library or TV room, or even take a jog around the deck. Four days after departing Algeciras, Captain Jensen is on the bridge preparing for the most hazardous stage of their 2,200 mile journey, piloting the ship into Rotterdam. It is always more dangerous to come into port to uh, confined waters, restricted areas, instead of being on, on the ocean. Getting a ship the size of a skyscraper into Rotterdam is so hazardous that despite 35 years experience at sea, Captain Jensen still requires help. So making his way through the choppy sea to join him is harbor pilot Itza. Itza has been guiding ships into Rotterdam for 20 years, and there's no greater challenge than navigating a ship the size of the Estelle Maers. Uh, the main risk of well, any port is the wind. If you have a lot of wind and uh, a lot of uh, big forces on the vessel, you have to control. To make matters worse, a stiff breeze is blowing in from the North Sea, meaning Itza and Captain Jensen will have a tough time keeping the vessel under control. Starboard 20. Starboard 20. The Estelle is so large she can't simply sail forward into her berth. The stern trust up. One of the world's largest ships is forced to undertake a three-point turn. It's a slow, nerve-wracking procedure and requires all the crew's concentration. Yes, we are very, very close to being positioned. Finally, after an hour of careful maneuvering, just before sundown, the ship tethers to the Rotterdam dockside. Yeah, yeah have a nice day. Yes, thank you, you sir. See you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye, yeah. bye. Bye, bye. As pilot Itza disembarks, Captain Jensen can reflect on a job well done. It's always a good feeling to bring the ship in, and I actually like the job to, to handle a ship. Uh, so uh, so uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with it, actually. While Captain Jensen gets the chance to relax, 
The dock loaders are tasked with digging out the container of plums from among the 11,000 on deck. It's a long, slow process as a huge gantry crane moves containers to and from the ship before finally plucking the reefer of plums from obscurity. Then a bizarre spider-like mobile crane moves in to transport the container from the dockside. The next morning, a truck carrying the plum container leaves the port, and just hours later, its cargo arrives at the supermarket. Incredibly, the fruit has been transported from Spain to Denmark in just five days. So, the next time you're out doing your shopping, you might like to consider all the people who have worked to ensure the supermarket shelf is well stocked. And we can all enjoy the fruits of their labor. <laughs>